Welcome back to College Conversations. I'm Dr. Fedor and I help you navigate college. Please remember to hit subscribe, like, and share this video with other students who also might find it helpful. Many of you have emailed me asking me about careers in sports management. You've always loved sports and you're thinking, oh, wouldn't it be great if I could work in sports the rest of my life? So today I have Chris Thompson, owner of the Westfield Starfires, here to share with you his journey. Dr. Fedor, good morning. How are you? I'm well. Explain to me, how did you get started in sports management? Great question. So, you know, growing up in Western Massachusetts, I always wanted to work in sports in some capacity. And that journey led me to Southern New Hampshire University in Manchester, New Hampshire. I was actually the last class of New Hampshire College before the university name change. So I majored in business with a concentration in sport management, but I really wanted to focus my internships and my volunteer work either with teams or leagues. So ultimately I'm um, graduating from SNU and got my dream job. I was working in Boston, a sports marketing agency called Wolf Associates, uh, Bobby Orr was the managing partner at the time. Interesting. And I worked on some grassroots marketing programs that summer with Carlton Fisk and Dave Winfield. 9-11 hit and Wolf, after 30 years, they closed their doors. Okay. So a lot of the agents went out on their own. They had a baseball division, yep. a golf division, some agents that worked for uh, represented professional soccer players. I had the opportunity to come back to Western Mass and become the marketing coordinator for the American Hockey League at okay. the league headquarters in downtown Springfield. I was an intern for about eight months at the AHL, and they heard I was thinking about relocating back to the Springfield area, and that position was created. So I spent four years at the league headquarters, and I worked with a lot of the clubs within North America. Some of the franchises were more mom and pop. Others yeah. were owned and operated by their National Hockey League affiliate. So I got to see how different organizations were structured, both from an organizational chart to their marketing in the community and the product on the ice. So it gave me a really nice perspective of big markets versus small markets, but I really wanted to get into sales. And I had the opportunity to speak with Bruce Landon, uh, then owner and founder of the Springfield Falcons okay. out of the Mass Mutual Center. And this was right around the time that the old Springfield Civic Center was given, getting a, a $70 million renovation to become the Mass Mutual Center. So I got to kind of shift gears, uh, kind of take out your nine iron and I could chip from one office to the other, from the AHL headquarters at Monarch Place over to the arena. It was a lateral move, to be quite frank. It wasn't a Which major promotion at all. Is important, and it's okay to make a lateral move because because you're learning something new. Exactly, it was a move that the timing was right. I wanted to learn corporate partnerships and sales. I wanted to become a revenue generator. You know, if you can sell, you can write your own ticket. So worked my way up from account executive to senior vice president of sales and strategy for the Falcons over 11 years. Unfortunately, in 2016, that franchise was sold. They relocated to Tucson, Arizona. The Arizona Coyotes purchased the team so there was a couple months of uncertainty. I was very fortunate to join Paul Picnelli's group who secured an expansion franchise. Really, it was the Portland Pirates, not expansion, but the Pirates relocated to Springfield. So I held my same role for two years. And my good friend, uh, Donnie Morehouse, who has been an entrepreneur his entire life, he has been encouraging me to go out really and start my own thing, if you will, whether it's consulting, an agency. So in that summer of 2018, took the leap of faith and secured the expansion franchise for the Westfield Starfires. And the Starfires are a wooden bat summer collegiate baseball franchise. And we have teams within New England. And we noticed a void that Western Massachusetts and specifically Bullens Field in Westfield would fit perfectly 
within the Futures League footprint. They were in Pittsfield, Worcester, Brockton, North Shore, down in Connecticut. And for travel purposes, it worked well. Um, so really proud of being able to, A, be involved with the Springfield Thunderbirds as a startup. I never really wanted to move to Des Moines, Iowa, or somewhere in the Midwest to right. start up a franchise in the American Hockey League. So to do it in my own backyard was pretty special. And then to then two years later, do it again with all the skin in the game. Uh, obviously, we're going into our fifth anniversary this season. So oh, we're, congratulations. You know, had a lot of growth. Very, very, very excited for this upcoming year. Do students necessarily need a bachelor's degree in sports management or can they come from other backgrounds? Like the, the students that you hire. Getting a degree in business or finance Okay. Uh, accounting, perhaps marketing, communication. If you can major in something within the business realm, maybe you could have a concentration in sport management. Up at New Hampshire College, for me, I was able to have my advisor be the chair of the sport management program. So I lucked out, even though I was a business major with a concentration yeah. in sport management. Teams aren't hiring necessarily a sport management major. If you see what's happening in and around Major League Baseball, you know, it's sabermetrics and right. they're hiring Ivy League students that are really strong in math. And I think you got to find the right person. You, you, you can major in finance and go get an internship in any industry you like. It doesn't have to be healthcare or sports. I think it's a conversation you have to have early on. Families should be sitting down and having these conversations and looking at where the career opportunities are within each industry. Where do I want to move to? Do I want to stay in Western Mass? Do I want to go back home to upstate New York? Right. Do I want to relocate to Boston where you know, there's a lot of opportunity? I think you have to have that conversation with, with your family, with your advisor in advance. So congratulations on five years uh, for the Westfield Starfires. How did you become an entrepreneur? For me, it was something that I've always wanted to do. I never knew how to own a business until I sat down and put together a business plan and a marketing plan to get the Starfires off the ground. You know, it's a great story. Uh, I was at the Hangar Pub and Grill in Westfield when Donnie Morehouse showed me a promotional video of the Futures League. And we started talking about why not Westfield. I ended up making a cold call, probably the most important cold call uh, to date of my career. I reached out to a gentleman named Chris Hall, who was the commissioner of the Futures League at the time. We had about an hour and a half conversation of who we are, what we're looking to do, and why Westfield. So I met with Chris about uh, a week later. We spent four hours together at a game in Worcester. And I'm driving back on the Mass Pike and I called Donnie. I said, hey, we can pull this off. So we got to work very quickly on that. We launched our franchise and had 90 days from our press conference until opening day. Wow, that's impressive. So had to launch the brand, generate a season ticket campaign, sign yeah. players. We were able to negotiate a 15-year lease with the city of Westfield, you know, go out and, and, and solicit some community and sponsorship support. So we were under their gun. Uh, but we got it done. Chris, what's a Futures League? So the Futures Collegiate Baseball League, the FCBL, again, is a summer wooden bat league. We recruit players from around the country, some top D1, D2 players, uh, scholarship athletes who really want to play at a higher level, and they're looking to get drafted. So we have several scouts at our games, Major League Baseball scouts throughout the summer. We were very uh, lucky last summer. We had two alum. Starfires players that were drafted in the 2022 Major League Baseball draft. Reggie Crawford went in the first round, 30th overall to the San Francisco Giants. And a local player, uh, Pat Gallagher from Lemonster, pitched at UConn. He went to the Toronto Blue Jays. I believe he was in the 11th round. So we're pretty proud of building our baseball credibility. Uh, Nick Domkowski from West Springfield. Uh, pitched at University of Hartford. He's now in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. He had a big save uh, this past spring training against the Yankees. So he's doing really, really well. He's one of the top lefties within the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. Um, so we're looking to see him get promoted, hopefully to AAA this year. And the Futures League, we have players come in to live with host families in Western Mass. So they're here for 12 weeks, nice. uh, hopefully to get more bats and get you know, become a better ball player to go right. back to campus the following year. And Chris, I have one 
A final dumb question. Why do you make the distinction of saying a wooden bat league? So during college, they use aluminum bats. And the Cape Cod Baseball League, which is the best summer baseball on the planet, a lot of the players from the Futures League will then go on to play on the Cape the following year or the year after. And they use old school wooden bat, just like in Major League Baseball. There's something about nostalgia, something about wooden bat, baseball, Americana. It's, uh, okay. it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful summer. Okay, good. Chris, thanks so much for joining me today and answering all my questions about sports management. For more detailed help on how to navigate college, please check out my course on Udemy, College 101, How College Works. And remember to keep learning.